Hello fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at the Splinter vs. Baxter 2-pack from the Target exclusive cartoon TMNT line from NECA Toys. Very excited for this 2-pack. Uh, I think both of these figures look really, really good. Very faithful to their cartoon appearances. I mean, NECA just crushed it with both of these. I was also very excited to get a hold of this one. I thought it was going to be really hard to find, and then surprisingly, it wasn't. So that's really cool. I'm glad that the distribution seems to be stepping up. I actually saw several of these at my local Target, which is a first. I think every once in a while, I see one here or there. Um... But there were several. I mean, I want to say like a whole shelf's worth. So I'm, I'm happy that the distribution is getting a little better. And hopefully everyone who wants one of these can get one. Because this set looks really, really cool. A ton of accessories. I mean, you can just see already the amount of accessories that this comes with. I'm thinking maybe because they're smaller figures, they were able to pack in a ton of accessories. I'm happy though. I'm very excited. Artwork on the front of the box. Very cool. Nice picture of Splinter over here. Nice picture of Baxter Stockman over there. Nothing really going on, on the top, just got that classic TMNT logo, and then nothing really going on on the bottom. On the back, you have a cool group shot there, along with the other two packs that are available. And then you have a little bit of a bio there, if you want to go ahead and read that. So I'm going to go ahead and get these guys out of the packaging, and we'll take a closer look. Here are the two figures out of the packaging, and they both look really good. I'm really excited about this set. Um, I'm going to put Baxter off to the side for a moment. We're going to take a look at Splinter first because the amount of accessories this set comes with is mind-boggling, and that's for both figures. They did a really nice job here. Uh, the first thing we can take a look at, actually, is this mat that he's standing on. This comes with the set, meant to look like a little bamboo mat. It's kind of made out of like a foamy material. It's not quite paper. I thought it was just going to be either paper or cardboard, but it's actually a thicker kind of foamy material, so I don't think it's going to rip super easily, which is nice. You could roll it up if you had to. I don't think you'd have a problem with that. It's kind of cool. It's a neat little accessory there. Uh, taking a look at Splinter, he looks really good. I think they nailed it. I mean, he looks very much like his appearance on the show. He stands very well. He's got a kind of light, smaller tail. Uh, you know, doesn't really make him super back heavy, which is nice. And it does have a wire in there, so you can kind of bend it around. Now it does have a hinge right here where it kind of meets his butt. And it does have a swivel as well. Uh, pretty sure it has a swivel. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. I don't really want to... Yeah, it does. It definitely can swivel a little bit side to side there. I'm pretty sure you could spin it all the way around if you wanted to. But it definitely has a hinge as well. Uh, but yeah, he stands really well. I had no problem getting him to stand. He does come with a cloth gi, which I feel like the yellow emblems on his shoulders should be a little bit more visible. They tend to get bunched up just having him wear it normally. I kind of wish they were a little bit... I tried to kind of pull this down to fix that. It's a little difficult to do, but I feel like if I can get just the absolute right... Uh, configuration. Now, I will say with when you have a character or a figure like this that has a bunch of articulation, but it's all covered up by like a cloth outfit or something like that, I feel like it's kind of wasted. But he does have this articulation, so I apologize, Splinter. We have to uh, open up your robe here and you know steal your dignity for just a moment, so we can take a look at your articulation here. Uh, he does have kind of this joint at the base of the neck. You can kind of see where this tuft piece of fur meets his torso so that can kind of move around that's on a ball joint and then he's got a ball joint at the base of the neck he can actually look decently up decently down side to side you can open his mouth pretty pretty wide and i think that looks really really good there uh, now he does have a hinge and a rotation in the shoulders but again it's a little weird to get it to go because of the outfit he has a bicep swivel. He's got a double jointed elbow. It is in there, and I can try to hike this up. But again, it's just a little awkward because it bunches up and it's rather big. And I will say, be careful though, because his arms do feel thin. I don't want to say brittle. They don't feel brittle, but I would be careful with them. But you can see he does have the double jointed elbow there, and mine feels a little loose. And I've seen a lot of people complain online. You can see how this joint tends to get. It almost looks like you're going to pry it out of there. You can see how it's kind of opening up a little bit. Like it should be, you know, tighter clamped down. So apparently that's a known issue. I've seen some people online complain about that. 
So I'm probably not going to mess with it too much more. I'm just going to close this back up and let that stay how it is. I'll probably just bend them at the elbow like that and then just kind of leave it. Because I do not want that to break off. Position his belt a little bit better. So that's the same. You do have a wrist swivel. Now there is a hinge in the wrist as well. But both him and Baxter are kind of really... Not again, I don't want to use the term brittle, but they just have thin, tiny bodies, and so I don't really want to try to bend the wrist. Well, all right, actually, you know what? It's doing it, it's cooperating. That's nice. I would just be very careful with it. I, I would be very careful when moving some of these, these joints because they are tiny, he is small, and I don't want anything to break off. Um, he does have a joint here in the torso, so you can move that around. He does have uh, pretty nice ball joints here in the hips. And then he has um, thigh swivel there. He's got a double jointed knee, but it's a little weird. Uh, this one, I don't really have any trouble moving. But this joint here, it's a little bit tighter. Um, you can definitely rotate it, as you can see. There is a joint there, but it doesn't want to move too much for me and I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, you do have a joint here in the ankle and then you also have some side to side and then you do have another joint here in the front of the toes so that's nice. So he's got a lot of nice articulation like I said it just gets covered by this gi and so it's it's kind of hard to tell where it is most times and also um, I would definitely be wary with those elbows because I've seen a couple people online where they mess with it enough and then he you know the arm pops out and I don't want that to happen so I'm just going to kind of bend him there and let, <laughs> let it stay inside and not fall off but yeah he looks really really good he definitely looks like his cartoon counterpart and I I can't get over how much they nailed that. He really, really looks good. Um, accessories. He comes with a ton of accessories. So he comes with the little art book where he got the name for the four turtles, as you can see there. And it has this picture on it just says art on the back here. I don't, if this is a famous work of art, I don't know it. But to me, it looks like a Homestar Runner character or something. <laughs> I don't really know. I'm probably just very ignorant when it comes to art, so I apologize. But I do like the little drawings. I think they look really fun. Um, he has this scroll, which this might be from an episode that I just don't remember. Uh, there's definitely some Japanese characters on there. I don't know if they're all... Um, I recognize some hiragana. They're, the, the rest might be kanji. I just I don't know enough kanji, to be honest. But I feel like it's a mixture of, of different characters. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's my guess. He has this katana, which looks pretty cool. And it comes with this crazy flaming uh, effect piece that you can slide on here so that it looks like he's wielding a flaming katana. That's pretty cool. That's like something out of, uh, you know, the Lightning Collection Power Rangers line or something like that. That's pretty neat. Continuing on, he has this yin-yang amulet, which is pretty cool. You can just go ahead and toss that around his neck. Fairly simple, but, you know, I think it looks good. He has a walking stick, which I think looks really good, and he can hold it very easily. Just kind of pop it into his hand. No problems there. I like it. Very easy to hold. Appreciate that. Uh, he does have the retro mutagen gun, which is from that episode where they kind of use that as bait to lure the turtles to the technodrome. And then he's got this cool little rat buddy which I swear is right out of that first episode where he's telling their backstory and it's Hamato Yoshi in the sewers, you know, handing the small morsel of food to the rat. And I swear this is lifted right out of that scene. It looks exactly like it. This is a perfect little recreation and they did a really nice job. Something simple, but really effective and I like it a lot. And then, of course, he comes with some extra hands. So he has got a kind of normal set of accessory holding hands, which works really well. I mean, he can hold all of his accessories here. We can go ahead and feed in the katana. Fits very easily, which I appreciate. So we can hold that. We can use the walking stick. 
I mean, you saw him hold it in the hand that he's got right now, but if you want a little bit firmer grip, he can hold that, no problem. He could hold the retro mutagen gun, fits in there pretty easily. So I like that. I mean, obviously it's important if he's going to have all these accessories that he'd be able to hold them. So I do appreciate that. So that's a nice set of gripping hands there. He also has this kind of like martial arts set of hands. You can see this is kind of like for, a, you know, different stances and things like that. Unless this one's for drinking tea with the pinky out, I'm not sure. <laughs> but either way, that's a cool set of hands. And then he's got this kind of like pointing hand. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure what this is for. I don't know. Rise Shining Gundam! That didn't work. Alright, so <laughs> there goes that theory. But anyway, it's just kind of like a pointing hand. Uh, but I don't know why that was the first thing I thought of when I saw it. It looks like he's just snapped his fingers. But, uh... Yeah, it's cool. You know, I, th I think it's nice. Uh, they all have these hinges here in the wrist. So, of course, you can just pop one off, pop the other one on. But, yeah, he comes with a ton of accessories. He looks good. I think they did a great job with him. I really appreciate all the articulation he has. I love that you can open and close his mouth. I'm going to open that up just a little bit. Like I said, just a little wary. Obviously, paint flakes are coming off. That's, you know, that's just the case with NECA. NECA, I love your figures stop painting the joints just stop it because it's not helping anybody the paint doesn't stay there anyway because as soon as you use the joint for the first time the paint just all comes off of my hands so just leave the paint off the joints we don't need it um i wish this would stop bunching so that i could see this emblem and maybe i need to bring this belt down maybe this belt is a little bit too high up so just have to kind of tweak that a little bit um and I'm a little wary of the elbows. I've seen a lot of people online complain about those elbows. So just be really careful with that because it does look like that. Um, it's a piece of plastic in a joint like this. And, and this is starting to spread open. And that's going to make the arm fall out, which I do not want to happen. So I'm going to not play with it too much. But every so often you can just kind of like clamp it back closed. So <laughs> just be wary about that. But otherwise, he's a great looking figure. So just for fun, I wanted to do a quick comparison. Uh, obviously, we have the Super 7 Ultimate Splinter here, along with the NECA Cartoon Splinter. And you can see that they're, while the same character, very different. This is very much a uh, reference to the original Playmates toy, while this is 100% his representation from the cartoon. And I think they both nailed it. I love both of these for very different reasons. Um, you can see this one's a little bit bigger. But, I mean, they almost look like they could be two different characters. The head sculpts are so vastly different. Uh, the tails are very different. The feet are pretty similar, and obviously the geese shares similarities. But uh, yeah, I think they both look great. I think both companies really nailed it with what they were going for. And uh, I'm really happy to have both of them. Now, as good as Splinter is, I definitely think Baxter is my favorite out of the two-pack. They nailed this. This is 100% his representation from the cartoon. It is ridiculously faithful. It looks like he just jumped right out of the cartoon. I mean, they have done such an amazing job with this. I can't get over how good this guy <laughs> looks. Look at that head sculpt. That is perfect. That is exactly what he looked like in the cartoon. They even had a little sheen on his eyes. Fantastic. It looks so good. Articulation-wise, head can actually look up, look down pretty far, which is actually nice. He's got some side-to-side... You can go back and forth. He's got a lot of nice movement on the ball joint there for the head. Uh, coming around to the back, the wings and the hands are all on a hinge that can also rotate around. So depending on how you want this to go, they, all four of these have the same articulation. It's a hinge and a rotation, and you can just kind of do what you want with that. I will say that these insect hands, um, I feel like it's a little weird. Obviously, the, the paint is coming off in the joints because, again, of course it is. As it gets everywhere. <laughs> so there's a nice hinge there and you have a rotation. No problem there. And they look good. I love the little fly hands. I think they did a nice job. You can see that they're kind of at a different angle. Uh, this one I feel like is a little bit better. This one tends to get in the way a little bit more. And I don't really know what I would change. Or how I would move it around differently. But... I don't know, maybe I would I would change the hinge so that it's like 90 degrees different from where it is, just so that the point of movement would be a little different. And I'm still getting 
flecks of paint everywhere. Again, I, please stop painting the joints. Anyway, the head looks fantastic. Ball joint there is good. You know the articulation for the wings and the fly hands. He's got a nice hinge and a rotation in the shoulder here for his arms. He's got double jointed elbows. This joint works great. Absolutely love it. Bends, rotates, no problem. This one, I can't really get to move. And I feel like every time I come close, I'm going to break something, so I'm not going to bother with it. I think it's painted again, which is also probably a reason why it's not moving around very much. But I don't know if there's also a rotation down here. It might just be the elbow bend. You do definitely have the rotation at the upper elbow joint. Um, but there's another joint here that I, I just really I can't get it to move. The upper elbow joint on both works fantastic. And I'll be honest, that's all I need. I don't really need another one. But it's there if you want to chance it. I'm afraid it's going to break, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, you do have a rotation here in the wrist. Now, same thing. His hands are tiny. And his wrist is very thin and very small. I'll show you when I get to the extra hands that he comes with. I could not get the wrist to move on any one of them. I went through all of them. I tried to move that wrist joint. It's not happening. Again, I think they're painted, and because they're so tiny, I can't really get a grip on them, and I feel like I'm just going to snap it instead of actually getting it to move, so I'm not bothering with it. But he does have hinges on all of his wrists. I just can't get any of them to move. I don't know if he has... I think he has something in the waist. He's got this vest on, which is kind of a softer rubber plastic over top, which I think looks great. I think they nailed it. I just... I can't tell if he's got... He definitely has a waist swivel, as you can see there, I don't know if he has anything in the upper torso. I feel like he probably does, um, but I can't get to it very easily. Now, the ball joint in the hip works really well. I like that a lot. Uh, I don't think he has a thigh swivel. Well, I really can't tell. No, I think it's just a ball joint, but I think you can get... Well, maybe it's a combination, but it's kind of hard to see. Just because of the way it's in there. So yeah, it might be a combination of a ball joint and a thigh swivel. But either way, you get the movement you need. There's no problem there. He's got double jointed knee. Again, the top knee joint works really well. The bottom one's better. I can at least move it this time. Um, let me see if I can get this to... It's really tight, so you got to be careful. But yeah, it bends. Uh, again, the top one's a little bit looser, a little bit more fluid. You do have a hinge in the ankle, and you have a little bit of side to side. So that's good. But yeah, he looks great. He really, really looks great. He looks exactly like the show. Exactly like I remember from the show. Really well done. Really, really well done. Uh, but he has a ton of accessories. So let's get into him here. He's got the little computer friend. I don't know if anyone remembers these. I think these episodes were from later on in the series. I want to say like maybe season seven, somewhere in there, if I just had to guess. Um, he's got a little like connection port here i don't know if they're going to give us a base later on or if we're just you know meant to find our own but there is a connection port there if you want him to kind of plug into something i remember later on in the show he put a disc in here and he grew like a jelly body or something or maybe it was made of energy i can't remember but he could move around a little bit but i also love how you can see you can get two different faces from swiveling it side to side it's one of those uh depending on you know how you look at it but that's excellent. This is such a fun accessory because I definitely remember the couple episodes where Baxter was flying around talking to this guy as his buddy. And I think this is a fantastic accessory. Uh, he's also got this gun that I guess is a mutagen gun. He can turn people into different animals. He could turn this dial. Now, unfortunately, the dial does not move on this one. But he, I guess he would turn the dial and then shoot someone. You can see there's a fly, there's a cat, there's a turtle, donkey, bunny. And I'm not sure what that other one is. Maybe a bug of some kind. He does come with a, I'm guessing this is like a gerbil Michelangelo. I'm not really quite sure what this is. Maybe a guinea pig or something. Hamster, one of those animals. But that's really well done. And then he's also got a little fly shredder. So that's really cool. Those are some fun accessories to go with this since, you know, I'm assuming he used this gun in that episode on these people to turn them into these animals. So that's really well done. He's also got this book, and maybe this goes with Splinter, I'm not sure. I can't tell what this is. It's just kind of a old beat-up book. I don't really I don't really know what's going on with this thing. 
So this goes to one of them. I mean, maybe it's it's uh, Splinter, maybe it's Baxter. I'm not sure. I, I'm guessing it probably is Splinters, but it's just an old book. I don't really know what's going on. It doesn't open or do anything. So not really sure what's going on with this. And then he's got uh, this plant, which I cannot remember the name of, but there's an episode where this is delivered to April and she uh, sniffs it and it, you know, like poisons her and she falls into like a coma state. And then they have to find the uh, the other. There's a second plant that, if I remember correctly, looks almost identical. That's why I can't tell if this is the antidote plant or the poison plant. I'm assuming the poison plant. But, uh, well, it could be the antidote because, you know, during the episode they find the antidote plant and then they're all kind of flying around trying to get it from each other and, and steal it back and forth. So uh, I feel like this might be the antidote plant because if I remember correctly, that plant had lighter colored flowers. Like, they were more pink, whereas the uh, poison plant had, like, darker red. But they looked almost identical from what I can remember in that episode. But I think that's a cool accessory. So that is the uh, plant from that episode. I guess you could use it as both. And then he's got some hands. Um, again, I could not get the wrists on these to move at all. But you can see he's got a trigger finger hand. I'm assuming for this gun, which would probably be pretty difficult to get in here but maybe we can do it um let's see maybe it would be better to just put it in this one it's a little difficult to get the all the fingers to fit inside but he can hold it at least so he's got kind of a hold it hand and then kind of a more trigger finger hand and then he's got the same thing for the other hand the other arm so there you go. So you have four sets of hands, closed fists, open hands, and then trigger finger hands. So pretty cool there. But I just, I'm blown away with just how good this guy looks. He 100% represents how he looked on the show. And they have absolutely nailed that. Uh, just for fun, because I have him handy. Here is a comparison with the Super 7 Ultimate Baxter. Let me see if I can pan out here. Now, this obviously is more of a representation of the original Playmates toy. Well, this is what he looked like on the show. And you can see they're pretty different. I mean, on the show, he had a darker vest, whereas he had a white lab coat over here. The eyes are different. The hands are obviously much bigger over here. You can see they both kind of come with the same gun, though. It looks very similar to the gun that he has. So, I think they're both great. Um... But I really, I really like this one. I think this one might be my favorite out of the two. I can't decide. They're both great for different reasons. I love them both. But uh, I wanted to just do a quick little comparison because I thought that'd be fun. And they really look vastly different, I have to say. You could almost pretend they're different characters and it's like a flyman army you got going on here. But very, very cool. So this is shaping up to be one of my favorite two packs that NECA has ever done. I mean, not only do you get two great figures of two great characters, you get so many accessories. It's crazy. Now, I'm not going to say the set is perfect. I mean, Splinter's elbows worry me a little bit. I've seen some people online complaining that theirs have broken all the way off. Mine, luckily, knock on wood, is not there yet. I think if I just remain a little sensitive with it, maybe be a little careful every time I try to move it, I should be okay. Um... Baxter is good. Some of his joints are very tight to the point that I don't even want to try to move them. So I kind of lose that wrist hinge, which I have to be honest, the wrist hinge doesn't mean all that much to me. But I really, I tried it on all of his hands. I could not get them to move. Um, so some of his joints, the lower elbow joints are a little tight as well. So just have to be careful with these things. I guess you could always try heating them up. I know a lot of people do that. I really just wish they would stop putting so much paint in these joints. I understand they want to paint the hand or whatever part of the body you're on, but you paint these joints and then they don't move. And then when you finally get them to move, it just breaks all the paint off anyway. So what was the point? I don't know. I just wish there was something they could figure out. And, and I'm not saying it's a deal breaker by any means. The figures are still great. I still definitely recommend picking them up. Uh, but it's just one of those things that I, I wish they would figure out a way to get better at that because it really just it causes a problem and it makes me scared sometimes to move certain joints because I really don't want it to snap off in my hand because things like that have happened to me in the past. Not necessarily specifically with NECA stuff, toy lines in general, but it always makes me wary, um, you know, handling joints and things like that, when, especially when they're painted shut. But this set does come with an unprecedented amount of accessories. So uh, uh, shout out to the little computer guy. I think that's my favorite one. 
but I mean, you had a little gerbil or hamster Mikey, fly shredder, the plant uh, from that episode where they poisoned April, the little rat companion. You have books, scrolls, uh, retro mutagen guns, mutagen guns, flaming swords, a ton of different hand options. There's a lot packed into this. I mean, even the little bamboo mat, such a simple accessory, but it works and it looks great. And I'm glad they included it. So uh, I would say that the positive far outweighs the negative with this set. And I definitely recommend picking it up. Splinter and Baxter both look phenomenal. So I'm very happy to add them to the collection. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.